Well, R2's upgrade Odyssey continues. He's got a new trick up his sleeve. His trading card dispenser has been installed and is working. And uh, I'd like to share with you guys how I did it. So this is R2's trading card dispenser. This is a modified version of the trading card dispenser 2 designed by James R5D4. He also goes by Jaffa007 on Astromech. Uh, the modification that made it possible for me to install this in the Mark III body was uh, created by Dave Stanky. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and he modified the shape of this front, and we'll get into why that's important. Uh, some cool features about this trading card dispenser that make it a little bit unique. Um, it does include a removable cartridge that's spring-loaded, so uh, you can have spare cartridges uh, around, like I have a spare one here. So it makes for easy swaps uh, if you run out of cards at an event. And this particular trading card uh, dispenser is motor-driven. So uh, this is just a small 5-volt motor. And uh, when it turns on, the wheel starts to turn. And depending on how you have it hooked up, whether it's uh, switch controlled or a timer, or in my case, I'm using a remote control relay, um, you, I can just press and hold the button down as long as I want. And as soon as I release the button, the motor stops. So James's original design um, was, uh, I'm not sure if he intended this to be behind the radar eye. He has an R5D4, of course, because that's his handle. Um, so this was the first version. He later modified that um, to fit behind his um, utility arm carrier on his droid. Now, he does not have a battle uh, droid, as far as I know. So this was uh, done specifically to fit his droid. And it got us closer to where we wanted to be able to put it behind the large data port on the Battley Mark III. But uh, I'll show you how this didn't quite fit the bill and how David's modification uh, was really the, the key to making this uh, really easy to drop in. So let me show you how this uh, eventually fits inside the R2. So unfortunately, installing the trading card dispenser does require that you remove not only your Lazy Susan, but the top ring, which actually sits across the top here. Um, if we look down here near the large data port, uh, you can see that at the top of the util utility arm area, there's this nice little ledge right here, and this is uh, the ideal place to, in my mind at least, to put the trading card dispenser. And if we look at James's original curved design, um, if we rest this bottom edge, uh, then the slot is obviously way too low to be able to uh, to get out in uh, over top of the large data port. Um, additionally, the uh, the mounting points are just not quite aligned for a battley droid. Uh, this really was uh, what James did specifically to fit his droid. But then what Dave was able to do was he was able to correct those. And if we look at this version of his, if we set it right down on that shelf, this is sitting perfectly flush with the top of the lower piece of the large data port. And furthermore, once you put the lid of the top half on here, this surface here is going to sit exactly flush with the top of the large data port, which will sit up here. And that gives a nice shelf for the top ring to sit. So the nice thing with this is this effectively sandwiches the trading card dispenser between the top ring and the utility arm carrier, uh, which adds, for, you know, makes for extra stability too. So uh, when you do attach this to the body, the weight, and the, not that the trading card dispenser is that heavy, but there won't be a lot of weight torquing on that. So one thing though that I did notice on my R2, and I'm not sure if this is gonna be the same on all R2s or not, all battle R2s, is if we get in really close and look at the junction between the lower piece of the large data port and the body, one thing that I realized is that once I tighten down the top ring, I'm just gonna simulate that by pressing down on the ends, you'll notice that that large data port actually bows upward. And I think it has to do with just the way that the geometry of this particular piece is. Um, when it tightens down, and I noticed that this was actually the case the whole time, I'd never noticed on R2, but uh, once he's all buttoned up, that bottom piece of the large data port was actually sticking up by a couple of millimeters. And so I started to worry that if 
the piece was engineered to exactly match that height. And really you need this to be flush because the opening for the trading cards is so, so, so narrow um, that that one or two millimeter of deflection could end up obstructing the cards. So what I ended up doing was uh, once again, using the uh, cutting volume tools in Prusa Slicer was in the actual, this was just a, a prototype that I did, the top part of his uh, modified design, I ended up adding two three millimeter holes uh, to mount directly to the back of the large data port. Um, now the fasteners need to sit flush inside here. So I did, um, I actually was going to use some socket cap screws. So I have a larger countersink in there so that they sit below the surface. Um, but the intention being that we would end up instead of fastening the trading card dispenser to the body, we would attach it to the large data port itself. Uh, that way, making sure that uh, that it stays completely flush all the time. And that seems to do the trick. So the other real benefit to mounting this to the large data port is that should anything happen, anything break or need to be replaced, uh, this is a much smaller and easier piece to reprint and to replace than the body. Um, the uh, screws sit in there nice and flush, and you can see that there's no obstruction there uh, on the, the slot. So, and also if you've watched my other videos, you know how much uh, I am a fan of modular assemblies. So I just have a short pigtail here that I can disconnect and connect to a bench power supply. Um, be mindful though that this motor has really tiny little contacts on there. And once you solder the wires on there, um, definitely add some strain relief. I just used a blob of hot glue, but that help will help prevent these wires from coming disconnected. So now with the dispenser connected to the large data port, I should be able to button this all up and everything should work fine. Famous last words, right? One other real quick little pro tip. Uh, if you haven't already, leave a notch in the crossbar on your, uh, on your dome gear ring. It makes removing the Lazy Susan that much easier. You don't have to disconnect your entire slip ring. So one other thing worth mentioning about the trading card dispenser is that uh, it can be a little bit finicky. Um, a couple of tricks that I've learned uh, that help improve the, uh, the success rate of dispensing a card is, is one, not completely stuffing this cartridge full of cards. I think um, between 30 and 35 cards in here works about ideal. Um, sometimes when it's really packed in there, um, it, it's just so tight that the, the motor's not able to pull the card out um, from the stack. So keep that in mind. Uh, secondly, uh, these cards uh, that I've had made are glossy on one side and less glossy on the other. Uh, the wheel gets better grip on the non-glossy side. And then kind of along with that, when these cards arrive, they have a natural uh, kind of bow to them. And so by putting them uh, down here as the card moves forward, you know, the grip is, is improved. Uh, anyway, I've been experimenting with it and I found that that really helps uh, improve the overall uh, success rate of dispensing a card. Occasionally it might still pull two cards out, but uh, that's just an extra bonus for whoever is getting a card. Uh, in terms of where to get these cards made, there are some threads on Astromech that include uh, some template files. Um, I've heavily modified my template files and, and customized them um, for, for my purposes. I don't think that's something that I can share, but I will make sure that I share uh, the links to all of the printable files um, from both James and from David. And uh, so hopefully you can uh, give this a try for yourself. Now let's see how well this works. All right, let's see what happens here. So as I mentioned before, I'm just using a separate remote relay uh, in order to power this. Uh, so I am not directly integrating it with my control system. Um, if you're running Shadow or Padawan and you have access to uh, your Arduino, I'm sure there are plenty of ways that you can uh, trigger a switch. I think James's initial implementation, he used a servo controlled switch along with a timer uh, circuit to control the timing. But for me, if I just press and hold the A button, 
card dispenses. I can press and hold it as long as I want. And it seems to be working pretty well. And you can just keep going if he wants to be really generous and make all the kids happy. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, uh, I think this is just about wraps up this video. I, you know, again, there's lots of lots of ways to uh, to do anything in droid building, and this is the way that I've chosen to do mine. Uh, I hope this maybe inspires some of you to do something similar with your droids. Um, this is going to get a, a good workout in the month of October. I've got a handful of events, uh, STEM Fest events, as well as Air and Scare, our favorite event of the year, coming up at the end of October. So uh, thanks all for watching, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.